In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an electric hot water heater. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. Installing one of these isn't too difficult, so let's get started. If you have not yet purchased your hot water tank, I want to go over a couple options you have. You can get what's called a tall hot water tank. That's what I got here. As you can see, it's about 60 some inches off the floor. And then they make a shorter one that's called a short tank. That's going to be a little shorter and a little bigger diameter, but it will still hold the same amount of water. Obviously, if you get a 50 gallon, it's going to be a tall one or a short one, or in a 40 gallon is going to be a short one or a tall one, vice versa. So it's all depending on the area in which you got to store your hot water tank. So as you can see, I'm going to be putting this back in this closet. So a tall one's going to work great. And also, if you want to look at different size tanks, typically if you got a household of about two people, a 30 gallon tank's fine. If you have a household with three to four people, a 40 gallon tank will work. If you have a household of four to five, a 50 gallon tank would probably be sufficient. And if you have a household of more than five people, then you probably want to go with a 75, 80 gallon tank, which is a pretty uncommon, but they are out there. All right, let's get to installing this thing. This hot water tank is being installed in a new construction house and I don't have the water turned on yet. So if this was going to be installed in a house that has water on, be sure to turn the main water supply off to the house so you don't make a mess. Before I make my connections to the hot water tank, I always installed what's called a hot water heater pan. And this is going to be a safety net in case the hot water tank leaks. It's going to direct the water down to the crawl space. And most pans will come with a fitting like this. It's going to have a rubber gasket and then a nut that's going to go over it to hold it into place. And it's going to have a hole that's already pre-cut into the side for here. So I'm going to first install this fitting onto the pan. In order to install this fitting, we just take this nut off. And then as you can see, the rubber seal is going to stay onto this. And for a little extra security, I'm actually going to put just a little bit of silicone right around that rubber. It's probably a little bit of overkill, but I figured since I had some on me, it'd be a good time to use a little bit of it. So I'm just going to go right around that fitting. And then we're going to go ahead and pop that right through this side. It always helps to get this a little straighter. So that way it's going against a flat surface if it's these metal pans like so. So it's going to go into it like that, then just tighten that nut right onto it. I'm now going to set the pan in the place where I want the hot water tank to set. And I want my drain to come out in the back corner of this closet. And in order to drill the hole out, I got an inch and a quarter drill bit here. And the pipe is a one inch pipe, which I already purchased. So the inch and a quarter is going to be for the one inch pipe. So I know I want to drill a hole right here in the floor. All right, now the hole is drilled out and let's clean this up real quick. I'm now going to take an elbow in order to go down through the floor and place in the center of that hole and set it into place. And I know the piece of pipe that I need to cut is going to go an inch into this fitting and an inch into this fitting. So the distance in between, I got about an inch. So I need a three inch piece of pipe cut in order to get to this hole. And then I'm just going to extend this down about a foot in order to get past the floor joist. I'm now going to take the stick of one inch pipe and get a three inch piece cut. And then again, I know I need at least a foot here. So it doesn't have to be exact just as long as it goes below the floor joist. So I'm just going to cut off about right there. I'm now just going to take my pipe cutter and cut them in those marks. I'm now going to glue all three pieces together and I'm going to be using medium clear PVC cement and I'm not going to worry about primer because this isn't really a true plumbing job. This is just a simple drain. I'm now going to glue this into the drain onto the shower pan. We got to make sure we are pointing down going straight through the floor. And just so you're aware, if you're installing a hot water tank in a basement, you would just route this to your nearest drain. But in this case, we're going straight through the floor here. So I'm going to place this down in through that hole and I'm going to get this flat on the floor. I'm now going to place the hot water tank on top of that pan and I'm going to get a helper to help me do this. 
All right, now we got to make connections to the hot water tank. Oftentimes, in order to install your hot water tank, you would have to buy these dielectric nipples. And the reason why you would have to get these is because it wouldn't have them on the tank like this tank does. And if you have two different metals coming into contact, it would cause corrosion. So there's always a nipple between the hot water tank and your flexible lines that's going to hook to these PEX pipes. So I just want to let you know that and oftentimes they're coated in this plastic PEX coating in order to cut down on corrosion there as well. But if you did have to install these, the how you would do it is you would use a pipe wrench and wrap these in TEF tape and then just tighten them onto the tank. So it's a pretty simple process, but with this one I don't have to do that. In order to connect the hot water tank to the PEX pipe, I got these Shark Bite hot water tank flex hoses. And these are very easy to install. In fact, they're probably one of the easiest flex lines to install because of the shark bite fitting. And I wanted to show you guys how to do this because it's a very simple DIY project and a lot of people are familiar with them. And the tools that we're gonna to need to do this is a crescent wrench or a wrench that's gonna fit this end. And we got pipe dope that's going to give us a nice seal and we got Teflon tape. You can buy these flex lines as a kit or separate and if you want to buy these exact ones I'll put a link in the description below in order to purchase them. And as you see there's one with a shutoff valve and then there's one without a shutoff valve. The one with the shutoff valve is going to be installed on the cold water side and the one without the shutoff valve is going to be on the hot water side. The reason why that is if you ever have to drain your tank and replace it for whatever reason, you would shut the valve off on the cold side, drain the whole hot water tank, and then it's gonna drain the water out of this line with it, so you don't really need a shutoff valve on this side. But if you wanted to put one there as well, that's totally fine. But I'm gonna start by installing these onto the tank. Because these pipes are a little bit in the way, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these back some. I'm gonna leave plenty of length because I still gotta cut them to an exact length here in a moment. So I'm just gonna snip these off. If you're wondering why these were connected to begin with, it's because I had to pressure test my whole house for inspection. And that is an easy place to connect the hot and cold together to make it a closed system. And if you want to check out that video, I'll put a card in the top right hand corner of the screen so you can see how I roughed in this whole house. The first step to make the connection between the flex line and this nipple is to take TEF tape and we want to go in a clockwise fashion so that way when we tighten up the flex line, it doesn't remove the TEF tape. And I usually wrap this around here about six or seven times. In order to add a little extra security, I do like to use pipe dope or joint compound when installing my flex lines. And this usually doesn't require too much to get a good seal. I'm now gonna use the pipe that does not have the shutoff valve and install it on the hot water side. After I can no longer hand tighten it, I'm going to use my crescent wrench and tighten it up to make sure we get a great seal. And I recommend securing this to where it's just very snug. You don't want to over tighten this. And if you do hook up your water and there's a slight leak, it's easy to tighten this up a little more. So that's all there is to connecting the line to the tank. I'm now going to install the flex line with the shutoff valve on the cold water side. And I'm just going to repeat the same process. I'm now going to bend these flex lines down to that water line and I'm going to mark right at the end of the hose so that way I know where to cut my pipe and as you can see I'm almost up against the wall but we don't cut it clear back here to where this is. We actually are going to mark this end right at the end of the shark bite fitting and then we're going to measure back off that mark technically 1.13 inches in order to compensate for the amount of pipe that has to go into that shark bite fitting. So I'm just going to go a little over an inch and make a mark. So about 1 and 1 16th onto this pipe. So that is exactly where I got to cut this pipe off. In order to cut it off precisely there, I'm going to put my pipe cutter right up to that PEX pipe and squeeze it together tight and then we're just going to slowly ratchet that down until it cuts it off and these pipe cutters leave a nice smooth cut as you can see just make sure it's nice and square 
Now I'm just going to double check to make sure the pipe is very clean where it's going to be sealed at. And that looks really good. Nothing wrong with that. And now if you don't have a pipe cover that will cover up this rough opening, get one that's going to go over after the fact like I got to do because I don't have one to go over it right now. But so you don't have this nasty look, I would put a cover that's a flange that's going to cover that up. I'm going to do the same on this side. We're going to pull this down and mark the end of the pipe. And then we'll have to measure back in order to get the proper distance. In order to get the shark bite on correctly, I'm just going to lean the tank back a little bit and then place it onto that PEX pipe and push it right onto the pipe. And make sure we go clear up to that original mark. All right, that felt like it went on nice and snug. And now I'm going to do the same to this pipe. And you can reference your pencil mark you made originally to make sure you're in all the way. And we're going to do the same to this one. And then push all the way on. And that feels really good. So that is exactly all you got to do to install your water lines together. And just so you're aware, these are three quarter inch water lines. In some jurisdictions, you may have to install an expansion tank on the supply side. I don't need to do that in my area, and that's because there's no closed system in the plumbing to where it's going to build up pressure in the water line. So out where the water comes in or anything, I don't have to worry about that. So always check your local building codes. I'm now going to address the wiring. And if you don't feel comfortable doing your own electrical work or even your own plumbing work, hire a professional. I'm going to open up my panel box and locate the hot water tank on the ledger here. And it corresponds with this breaker. And as you can see, it's powered off. And I wired this panel box myself. If you want to see how I did that, you can check out the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. But I do have a double 30 breaker because that's what's required to power that hot water tank. So it's already turned off, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this panel box and double check that that wire is turned off. I'm now going to turn on my voltage tester, and this is very easy to use. All I got to do is touch the cable and go right around it, and if it doesn't light up and start beeping, that means there's no power to this cable. So, as you can see, it's good to go, but never rely on these. This is just a good way to double check to make sure the power is off. So it's just a good reference tool. So now that we know there's no power to this cable, I'm going to go ahead and bend it down into place. And I'm aiming for right here where these two wires are stubbed up through the hot water tank. So now we're just going to fold this right down the wall. And I'm going to trace my water line here. And then we're going to go bend it right over into place. I'm going to use what's called a 3 8 Romex connector. And these are push in to secure them. They're very easy to use. We just lay it right into the slot where we need to install it. And we just kind of rotate them with a pair of needle nose until they're secured. And now I'm just going to fish this electrical wire into that Romex connector. Now that I got plenty of wire into this junction box, I'm just going to tighten up the Romex connector. And that's going to hold that wire into place. And now I'm going to pull these wires back so I can work on this wire and just strip off the sheathing. In case you were wondering, this is a 10-2 wire. We got two conductors, the white, the black, and then we got a ground. And now we're going to make these connections. I'm now going to use a pair of wire strippers and use the tin on the bottom of the mouth in order to strip off the sheathing. And I usually take off about a half inch in order to make the connection. I'm first going to hook my ground wire to this green screw. In order to do so, I'm going to snip a little bit of the length off because we don't need all of that length to do this. So I'm going to snip it here. After cutting that, I'm going to cut this copper wire to length. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and kind of wrap it around that screw so I know how long it needs to be. And it looks about something like so. So I'm going to snip it back to about right here. I'm now going to wrap this ground wire around that screw in order to make the connection. So in order to do so, we're just going to wrap it like so. Now after I got a nice loop around the screw, I'm just going to tighten this down to secure it into place. 
I am going to place black electrical tape around this white wire because it is acting as a hot, just so everyone's aware. So the first thing I'm going to do is twist together these two black wires, like so. And I'm going to use my linemans to do that because I want to make sure I got a great connection here. I'm now going to take a red wire nut and twist over that connection. And for a little extra security, I'm going to take electrical tape and wrap around that connection. And I'm now going to do the same to these two wires. The white and the red is going to go together in this case. Now I'm going to take my red wire nut and connect those two wires. And I'm also going to wrap electrical tape around this connection. I'm now going to place the wires inside of this junction box. Now that you got all your wires connected and have them placed neatly inside of the junction box, it's time to remove this screw and place this cover over the junction box. Now that I have my electrical and plumbing connections made, I'm going to take electrical tape and wrap it around this wire to this water line in order to give it a nice finished look. I now got to address this temperature pressure release valve. And the reason why these are on hot water tanks is if there's ever any buildup of pressure, it's going to come out this release valve. So it's very important that you route this water out somewhere that's not going to go all over your room. In order to route the water away from the walls and down to the pan, I got to install this pipe and it already comes with a threaded connection so I can just thread it right into that pressure release valve. So the easiest way to do it is turn it upside down and place it onto the pan. And then I'm going to come down about an inch from that pressure release valve and then cut it off right there. In order to make the connection to the hot water tank, I'm just going to place Teflon tape around the threaded end of the pipe. I'm now just going to hand tighten this into that pressure release valve. And then after I have it hand tightened all the way, I'm just going to take a pipe wrench just to give it a few extra turns just to add some security to it. Now that the hot water tank is installed and all the connections are made, it's very, very, very important that you turn the water on and let your hot water tank fill up with water before powering on the electric to it. Because if you turn the power on before this fills up with water, it's going to burn up the elements inside of your hot water tank and you'll have to replace them. So you definitely don't want to do that. And when you do turn the water on to your hot water tank, be sure to open up the hot side of the spigots in your house, like the kitchen sink and the bathroom sinks. So that way it pushes all the air out of the tank and it's going to allow room to fill up with water. So if you don't do that, it won't fill up with water properly. As far as troubleshooting your hot water tank, if you have lukewarm water in your house, the first thing to try is to check the thermostat inside of the hot water tank. It's usually in one of these covers, the upper or lower one, and that's going to give you a place to adjust the temperature in which the elements are going to heat up. Or if it isn't that and your temperature is set and it's still lukewarm, nine times out of ten it's going to be one of the elements are bad, either the upper or lower one. Usually the lower one will go bad before the upper one because of the sediment in some people's water. So that's just something to look out for. And also, if you turn on, there's no hot water at all. There's, it's either you didn't kick your breaker on or both of your elements are bad. So you can troubleshoot those couple things. And also, I want to let you know how to drain one of these tanks. If you take a look at the bottom here, this is a hose bib. You would hook a water hose up to this and then crack this valve, and then it's going to allow water to come out of the hot water tank. And when you do that, be sure to cut the water off up here, or you're just going to keep running water out of the house. And then once it's emptied out, then you can take out your hot water tank for servicing or to replace it. And also, this is the water tube that I installed for the pressure release valve. Now, after I install the three quarter inch pipe covers in the back here to give it a nice cosmetic finish, this hot water tank installation is complete. And if you want to know how I rough plumb this house with PEX pipe, be sure to check out this video. It'll help you out.